So vaccination is one of the, the key pillars to a good calf rearing programme and I'm joined now by MSD Animal Health, Suzanne Nocton. I suppose, Suzanne, just to start off, explain to us the whole vaccination process or why are we vaccinating and what are we vaccinating for? Yeah, so what we're trying to do, Niall, really with vaccination is we really want to boost that calf's immune system to give it that best example or best push um, and give it that extra protection, um, particularly against diseases. And of course, the number one disease that we think of when we're rearing calves and particularly when we're sourcing them in and, and bringing them in onto a yard is bovine respiratory disease or, or pneumonia. And I'm sure everyone has experience with, with dealing with that and the serious negative effects it can have on that animal and its production capabilities going on from an outbreak of disease. Um, so by vaccinating and typically against respiratory disease or either using an intranasal vaccine or an interjectable vaccine, we really want to give some protection or certainly reduce the in instance of diseases caused by some of your common ones like your pneumonia viruses, um, like BRSV and PI3, um, but also some of the bacteria that are out there as well, particularly Pastorella bacteria. Um, and certainly we know and I'm sure everyone has experience with, with rearing calves. Um, respiratory disease is quite a complex process. Um, there's not you know, one thing that can influence an outbreak. It, it usually can be a combination of factors. Um, of course, you know, you want to make sure you're so sourcing calves that have had good colostrum management in the early stages of life. Um, but also when you bring them on farm, you want to make sure that they're being reared in you know, good quality facilities with, of course, adequate ventilation and, and bedding at foot. And using vaccination as part of that management process, um, you're really giving that extra boost um, and really increasing that level of protection to try and reduce the outbreak of, of those diseases. And Suzanne, is, should we be vaccinated maybe on the, the farm where we're sourcing the calves or when they arrive or what's the kind of whole protocol? Well, most of the time when people obviously when they source them, they're bringing them on farm, usually they, they probably haven't received a vaccine. So typically what we tend to recommend is once they land on farm, leave them a couple of days to settle. Of course, they're going to be stressed. They're probably going to be a bit dehydrated when they land on farm. So you want them to settle down um, and be in their best general health for when you're going to vaccinate them. So generally, you know, bed them down, nice, well-ventilated shed for a couple of days and then start them on the vaccination protocol then. Um, of course, when you're administering the vaccine, the best thing, of course, is, you know, vaccinate all animals in that group um, and vaccinate healthy animals always. Um, if, they're, if they're already showing signs of disease or anything like that, they mightn't get the best response um, after giving a vaccine. So you really want to ensure that they start in the best possible page, really. And so when it comes to the vaccination process itself, are we going intranasal, are we going under the skin or what's best? So really with the intranasal vaccine, so for example, Villis intranasal, um, that can be given from minimum seven weeks of age, seven days of age onwards. Um, but once they get that vaccine, it has protection against PI3 and BRSV, two very common um, viral agents that can cause pneumonia. And that works within about a week. So seven days, they will have their full onset of immunity after that. And then that lasts about three, about 12 weeks or three months. Um, the other option then, it's really dependent on each farm. Of course, some farms might have higher risk for the likes of pastorella um, pneumonias, which is a, caused by a bacteria pastorella. Um, and in that case, it's often recommended to go for much more broad spectrum protection which this is where your bovipast um, comes in. And that covers PI3, BRSV, and your Mannheimia hemolytica, which is part of the Pastorella family. And that is an injectable vaccine. The difference with that is you obviously give your shot, first injection on day one, but it must be followed up four weeks later with the second shot of the primary course. And then you'll get your peak onset of immunity about two weeks after that. Um, and that gives you much broad spectrum protection. But with regards to your intranasal vaccine, which is just a once off dose, that gives you a really quick burst um, of immunity within a very short period of time after administration. Okay. And is there any other diseases that we need to be looking out for around the calf rearing time? Yeah, of course. Like, of course, we're, we're talking about um, respiratory disease, but of course, scour is, is another important one. And, and a lot of people would have experience with dealing with that. Be it, for example, if it's caused by the likes of cryptosporidium, which is a particular sort of parasite, um, or coccidiosis as well. Um, and of course, the most important thing when dealing with any scour outbreak is getting samples into your local vet um, to actually see and diagnose what exactly is causing the problem. And then, of course, you can tailor your, your treatment regime around that and certainly management as well with regard to making sure the hygiene is very good on the farm to reduce that level of an outbreak and making sure they've nice, clean, adequate, dry bedding as well at foot as well to, re to reduce that impact. Okay, so finally, Suzanne, 
is there a, is there best practice protocols around maybe handling these vaccines? Yeah, there is, of course, and it's very important that they're stored and you know administered correctly. And um, so once you get your vaccines, they should be kept in the fridge until you're ready to go with your batch of animals. And um, so obviously, once you've got your batch ready, get your vaccines and make them up according to the recommendations. They're actually all on a data sheet, which is in the box with the vaccine. So if you have any questions, you know, how much to give, where it should be given, it's all on that sheet of paper for you to check as well. Um, another very important point is, and I always say start as you mean to go on. So start with a clean needle and a clean syringe. And um, if you're using an old dirty needle, you're increasing the likelihood of an abscess or a lump developing, which we don't want, because that can sometimes impact um, the effectiveness of the vaccine.